Hi boys and girls, I hope you are well this lovely Sunday. We had started a new series last week, sort of new. We looked at the conversions of Paul the previous weeks and the conversions of Lydia and the jailer. And then we started looking at Paul's journeys and we did the first journey last week and today we're in his second journey, okay? So I hope you remember what we did. We looked at the people of Athens, okay? I am alone today, so I hope we'll still be able to sing and you will still be just as attentive. Before we sing for today, let's open in a word of prayer. Jesus loves me. I love Jesus. Our dear kind and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given unto us and for the gift of life. Thank you for these lessons that we have been learning. Thank you for this new series that we are doing, looking at the journeys of Paul. And we ask that you might be with us and give us understanding. Please bless our time together, Lord, and may your gospel be shared. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to look at the riot at Ephesus. And before we look into that, we are going to sing a song, okay? We're going to sing, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there is nothing my God cannot do. We're singing this song because it reminds us of the God that we serve, the one who created heaven and earth. He is the one true God. And this is the God that Paul preached about. And this is the message that caused the riot at Ephesus because they had an idol named Diana that they worshipped. So, boys and girls, if you're sitting, stand up and let's sing, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. Okay. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. Yes, indeed, our God is big, strong, and mighty. And he loves us so much that he sent his son for us. And we are going to be looking at Paul's stay in Ephesus and what this APRO was all about. So let's sit down and listen to today's lesson. So boys and girls, as I had stated earlier, last week we looked at Paul's stay in Athens, okay? When he visited the philosophers and told them about the unknown God. And we saw the responses of the people when they heard the gospel. And as we continue our lessons, we'll continue to see people's different reactions to the gospel. And now we're looking at Paul at Ephesus, okay? So by this time, Paul had been spreading the gospel and the Lord had been working in him to heal people as signs of um, the love and hope that Christ brought to the people, okay? And so Paul performed these signs and wonders and even his handkerchief could be used for people who were unwell and they were saved. But we no longer need signs and wonders because we have the Bible and Christ has been revealed to us. He's no longer someone that is unknown. And that's why we mentioned last week that God of a 
overlooked the times of ignorance but now commands us to repent okay now the people in ephesus were an interesting people and it seems like there's so much that happened in ephesus that i will explain to us so firstly when people heard that paul was passing through and they saw all the wondrous things that he was doing there were some men that would practice magic and remove evil spirits from people and you know what they tried doing they tried going to people with evil spirits telling them that they exercise or they command the spirits to come out by the jesus whom paul preaches okay this is an account from acts chapter 19 and this is the whole chapter that we'll be looking at and i will be mentioning some verses picking out some verses as i explain the story so after they declared this the evil spirits could not recognize them because they were not followers of jesus christ and they decided to try to do what Paul was doing that they might either gain some glory or feel some form of power. But these evil spirits beat up these men who tried to imitate Paul while they were, their hearts were away from Christ. And you know that news spread across the land of Ephesus. Okay, And people were afraid when they heard of what was happening. And in this situation, the Lord's name was magnified. People heard more and more about the Lord Jesus Christ because of Paul's work and everything that he was doing. And the land of Ephesus, I must mention, was a place that had idolatry, okay? The people at Ephesus worshipped a goddess named Diana, okay? She was an idol and the people of Ephesus would pray to her and have her around hoping to seek protection from her. They were a lost people. And so when this happened, when this event happened, people believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. There were some that believed and we're going to look at a reaction of another person that did not believe who caused a riot now boys and girls a riot is something that happens where people are upset about something and they make so ma so much noise sometimes people break things and it's just something that is scary to hear about or even experience but first let's look at those people that believed the people that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ came to Paul okay they realized that the God that they worshipped the, the God Diana that they worshipped was not the one true God we were singing about the one true God the one that sent his son the Lord Jesus Christ and that is the God that they believed in and they believed in Jesus Christ and the work that he did on the cross for their sins and how do we know this? We read in Acts chapter 19, verse 18 to 20, which says, And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. So these people believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and they confessed their sins. Do you have any evil things that you do or things that are not right? When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you confess your sins and you ask him for forgiveness. So those lies that you mention, those hurtful things that you say to your friends, those times when you're disobedient to your parents, you confess them to God and ask him to forgive you of your sins. But these people that believed we see did more than that. They brought their books, as was said, those that they used for magic, for evil. And you know what they did? They burnt them. Those books cost a lot of money. We're told 50,000 pieces of silver. 
but they considered them as nothing because of the joy of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and they burned them which showed that they turned away from their sins and that's what happens to us boys and girls when we confess our sins when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ his Holy Spirit helps us make tough decisions imagine spending a lot of money on something that's not worthwhile you might like it yes but then it's not good for you it might be a cartoon magazine about a very naughty boy who was disobedient to his parents and as you read it more you see that it's not something good that you should be feeding your mind with and you put it away or you give it to mom and dad to dispose of it you know and that's something that they did they burned their books and gave their lives completely to Jesus Christ because they believed in him. Will you do this, boys and girls, if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ confessing your sins? Will you let go of those sins, those things that you find precious for the sake of Christ? You must because it is better to believe in Christ than to have these things that weigh you down. But then we see another group of people and how they reacted. A man named Demetrius who caused the riot in Ephesus, okay? He was a person that made shrines for this goddess Diana. And he was upset that Paul was spreading the good news because he didn't care whether people would um, he didn't care about his goddess Diana rather. No, he cared about his business, you see, because he made money from those small things that he would make for this Diana. And he caused the people, he told them to look at what Paul was doing and how they would all run out of business. And they got upset. These people were hypocrites. They had a goddess, an idol that they claimed to worship, but when she was threatened, they did not think about her honor, but they thought about themselves and the money that they were going to lose if Paul's ministry was to succeed. And so they started a riot and were screaming, great Diana of the, great is Diana, of the Ephesians that's in verse 28 and they screamed and did this for two hours and it was violent and loud and the clerk had to calm the crowd because of all the noise that they were making but boys and girls we see that these are people who did not receive the message of the Lord Jesus Christ with gladness but they thought of their own person again, and this was a wrong response to the gospel. Do you feel like if you obey the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to lose popularity at school, or people will think of you as low class? Well, you need not think that way, because when you give your lives to Jesus Christ, you have a place in heaven and you are called God's child, which is far greater than anything. So think about these things, boys and girls, and we'll see next week, God willing, what happens when Paul moves from Ephesus and goes to Jerusalem. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and please get access to the take-home paper, which you can find from our website. So boys and girls, remember that God loves you and he sent his son to you and you must believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. For now we say bye.